Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on Analytics Stories. I'm super pleased to have friend and colleague Eric Duell with us today. Eric, good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. After it's been it's been a while, but uh, although we stayed in touch, but like the seeing part. Yeah. Is yeah. Last time about. was uh, down in Philly. We had lunch kind of at the end of 2019. Yeah, that's right. So the timing was good because then it was not good to see each other in person. <laughs> <laughs> for, <laughs> needed a break. For, Just oh, a little wow. break, Lee. Right. Little break. So let me tell you a little bit about Eric before we jump into our chat today. So right now he's at Comcast, and he is the Executive Director of Strategic Analytics for the Enterprise Business Intelligence area. And as we just said, he's down in Philly, and he moved there around three years ago, right? That's right. Yeah, from, from Cincinnati. And he was a Vice President of Analytics there at uh, EW Scripps, who many of you may know produce a lot of your favorite TV shows. And Eric, to me, he just always seems that he's you're perpetually busy. Uh, so on, on top of all his work, Eric has been busy getting his executive MBA uh, from Temple University. So congratulations on that. Yeah, that'll be later this summer. Looking to uh, finish that up. It's exciting. That's awesome. So you'll get to wear your cap and gown before your daughter does, right? Uh, yes, in this case, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting time to be doing that, you know, both like from a with what's been going on with COVID. Um, I was already kind of in the in the track when all that started. Um, so um, it's just been interesting to see how the whole world's evolved. But I did that yeah. primarily to have a, uh, in addition to just the academic part, like at my own personal learning and development lab. And it's been a great, great experience. It's nice. Something for your, you can share with your daughter all the fun memories of remote school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, there's one other thing, guys, I'll tell you about. So I know when Eric's not working or at school, he loves to bike ride because we were supposed to go on a trip last year and then stuff happened. So maybe maybe sometime later this summer, we'll be able to, to do that. It would, it would be great. So and Eric, I have the well, proper bike for it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So anything else you want to add before we jump in? No, just happy to see you and to get a chance to connect with you again after such a, um, you know, a, a while of not having to do that in person. And, you know, you, you talked about me being busy. I would just say right back at you because I know <laughs> since I've known you, um, so probably about like four or five years now, um, I know that, you know, that's something that's always been true about you. And of course, running your own business and all that, uh, keeps you busy. Yes. I appreciate that. It, it, yeah. it does. And, you know, uh, there is a lot of work that, uh, it goes on behind the scenes at, at running a, a, a one person shop. Mm -hmm. We can, we can leave all that for another, another time. I'll get someone to interview me and I can tell them all about the things that I do to appear to, uh, to be much larger than I am. Well, I'm excited. So let's get in and, 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 and talk about a few things here. Uh, now, I, you have a background in, in journalism from a long, long time ago. So it's interesting you're kind of back into the, you know, the, the, this phase with Comcast and, uh, you know, the last year, data and journalism has has been a big thing, right? We've seen we've seen that everywhere. You know, from the election to, of course, things going on with COVID. And one of the things that I saw you have done in the past, I know you, you said you weren't super um, involved with it um, through beginning to end, but you had set up a data hub for journalists. So, I th and this was a long time ago. So I think that's, you know, really forward looking. And what I'd like to do is talk about that idea because it's, you know, community is so important and it takes so much work to do that. Uh, so I'd love to hear um, anything from that experience or other, other things you've done around 
building community that you think could really help our listeners jumpstart any kind of communities that they've been they might be trying to build at work around data or, or other areas. Mm -hmm. So on that particular project, that's when I worked for Scripps. And so a journalism based organization. Um, and one of the things that we realized is that there was a lot of, um, you know, effort put into the investigative side of it. And even it doesn't have to be a, a, a national story. It could be a local story, but um, you know, getting either, you know, that first piece of information, like because someone contacts you and you've got a tip or you have a hunch that something's going on because you can just sense that something needs to be followed up on. Um, so there, a lot of energy was put into gathering that information to put together the story. And we would see, um, you know, there was, would be huge, like individual journalists would have, um, you know, I've got my file. Um, or if you think about some of the, the larger things that you could do, you could put together a, a database on, um, you know, um, contractors that had been um, found, um, you know, wanting perhaps in their compliance uh, mm -hmm. or restaurants mm -hmm. that were, were not passing muster um, from a, um, you know, inspections perspective, or it could be, you know, anything like that that requires the gathering information. What, what we would see is that a lot of people would put time in to those efforts, and then it would be really difficult to, um, you know, utilize those, um, partially because, you know, we all have our own systems. Mm -hmm. And when we're working ourselves, oh, like right. it makes sense for me. So there's no standardization, no, you know, kind of governance as we would, we would think about it of, of that data. Um, and so, and it would just reside on our, you know, individual hard drives. So the idea was to take, um, all that information and try to centralize it somehow. Uh -huh. Um, now database is hard. Every jurisdiction, like if you think about the food inspection thing, like has their own system. I mean, it's part of the, what you mentioned COVID, but one of the things that's difficult. And I think like the Johns Hopkins folks and um, other organizations like New York Times have done a great job in like, like how to standardize that and how to think about reporting nationally because every county, city, state right. has a different way of doing it. Yeah, they're cobbling so we, together. Yeah. So we just wanted to put, uh, try to put some structure around that um, and to figure out, you know, does Lee know something that if everyone else could know it, would there be a benefit? And that could, uh, what, what, what could work potentially would be like information that comes out of FOIA requests or, you know, information again from some of these um, databases um, or just investigative material. Um, so that was the idea, like coming together around a shared need. I see you've done that work. Can I leverage your knowledge mm -hmm. and to use technology to try to address that? Um, in some ways, a very easy problem to think about solving. And, oh, we can just get together and talk about it and share, but systemically or building a system to help do that is, is difficult uh, and can be a challenge. Yeah. But we, we, we wanted to do it. So what were some of those things that, that came up? So there, there's probably a uh, some aspects, like you said, that are technical, and then some are maybe... I don't want to, I don't know if I'll say cultural, like you said, people are working their own ways. You know, how did you, what kind of things did you run into as you were forming, even forming the idea and convincing people to do it, let alone well, the act of making it happen? Yeah. Con conceptually, um, I think one thing would be if we're taking notes off of, uh, you know, that someone's, um, you know, written down or a database that they have created um, themselves, like how do you actually vet that the information is, is good? So mm. one of the things that we really mm. had to think about was the provenance of that. And so as a, as a journalist, you could say, well, I, you know, I spoke to these folks and I have my sources documented, just like whenever someone like speaks on background or there, you know, there's some kind of something that someone wants to get out that might be restricted, you know, from the government or wherever. Um, there's a lot of work done to to figure out the provenance, and unless you have a system in place to do that, it's it's difficult. So that was one of the challenges that we had to to think about and set up rules. Uh, in fact, one of the things mm -hmm. that I I was doing um, 
before leaving, Scripps was actually helping to write the policy for like what we could put in, what we couldn't put in. So uh, related to that, but on a slightly different angle would be if you just go to the internet and we, we you know, search for your name, um, you know, I, I'm sure most of us have done that uh, either, you know, because mm-hmm. we just want to say, well, yeah. what's there or, you know, in some cases just looking for when was that thing I went to, <laughs> you know, that event or whatever. Um, but, we, you know, you've also probably seen, you know, uh, searching for yourself. I know I have like, they've got like my family members and where their what their birthdays are or, you know, where they lived. And sometimes that's wrong. Also, like there are people that, you know, I'm supposed to be related to that. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I've never even heard. Of. <laughs> so the point is even those third party databases, um, aren't always, are, aren't always right. And anyone that has bought marketing data or, mm-hmm. you know, data from third parties knows that. So those were some of the things that were difficult. So to your, your underlying question about building communities, um, I think you have to have a shared uh, shared mission or goal. Um, and then with whatever you're working with, the question is, how do you build credibility so that others will trust you and they know that what you're, you're working on can be relied upon. And then there's the governance and systems piece, which is present right. in any organization. But those are the three things like that come to mind. I'm sure there are many others. But just top of mind of Makes things sense. to consider when starting a community. Did you? Did it, those are all really good starting points. And I'm wondering, did you? You know, the thing you hear inside companies, of course, is you know, especially these days, it's what you know, what's the return on value of something like that, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest money, time, people, and was there any, any, any way you made that? Well, did that come up, of course? Uh, and, and was there anything that you were able to do to give something that's a bit intangible, some kind of tangible value that people could 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 get hold of to kind of get behind and approve working on something like that? Yeah, I'm I'm not able to speak to kind of the the trajectory that that project took after I um, left Scripps mm. and came over to Comcast, but. Um, I think there are, as a journalism organization, it was a little bit easier. Um, I think because, you know, everyone kind of understood the value of information, like just intrinsically, mm-hmm. because that's a part of kind of the, the ethos. If I, if I know this or I, you know, I'm finding out it's part of the, the deal. Um, so I think in that particular case, it was a little bit easier, but I can pick maybe another example where it's hard and that might be, taking information about a customer or someone's likelihood to do something. So this is very much kind of in the world that I live in today, Mm -hmm. where we're taking data um, and trying to understand, um, you know, if we do X, then what happens? Um, Because we want to provide, you know, better service to our customers. We want to have products that work. Um, We also want to, you know, fairly price them in the market. So triangulating between mm-hmm. that and like 17 other dimensions, <laughs> right. it, it, um, it can be, it, well, it's a, it's a fun challenge, but it, it can be a challenge. Um, and so just understanding that the quality of data coming back to that point and, um, and then to your point, like if we, if we make a change and this is the most important thing, I think will, or if we have this intelligence, will you actually act on it? So for me to kind of tie it together, that's where I see the, the, the important conversation happening. We, we could do this, but if we do it and spend time doing it, will you actually change? So that's usually rather than mm-hmm. people coming back to me and saying, you know, in a, an, an analytics leadership role and saying, you know, what's the value? I mean, I can talk about that, but then I mm-hmm. legitimately, I think, have to ask them, I don't know, like, let's talk about the changes you would make or things you would do different. I love and that. Let's go there to, uh, to answer that question. That's a, that's a great angle to take because, well, one, it brings the question of the, the value into the conversation, but it, it, it really gets to the heart of the matter 
of one, will they change? And also, what does it take to do that? Right. And you start to break it down even into smaller, smaller uh, uh, discussion points or, or tactical things that you have to do that seem that might be talked about more generically. And when the time comes, it might be like, well, we're not prepared to do that. Maybe it's a yeah. technical issue or maybe it is a cultural issue or, you know, or an organizational issue, whatever it is. So I like that that notion a lot. It, re- it also reminds me of um, conversations that you hear all the time about real-time data. We need real-time data. And then you say, well, okay. So they might say, we need to know our, our real-time um, ad campaign data, for example. right? And then you say, okay, so are you going to be able to make changes in real-time to your programs? Oh, no, we can't do that. Is why do you need real time data, right? Same kind. Of, it's a, it sounds yeah. very similar to that kind of a conversation, and it's a legitimate question, and you know something that a responsible data leader or analytics leader should ask. Um, now, um, there there might be times when you know you kind of touched on it earlier. You're you're challenging culture or. Mm-hmm knowledge that's assumed to be true, but maybe we don't have evidence that it's true, that can sometimes lead to a more difficult, but it, it critical conversation. And I think that as a leader, that's part of our job to say, okay, I can spend weeks or have my team spend weeks doing something. But you know, if, you're, if we're not really um, going to make a change, then we probably should spend time somewhere else. And if you've, you've got a good partnership with your your, your business uh, partner, or if you're on the business side with your analytics uh, mm-hmm. shop or leader, um, that should be a conversation that, although uncomfortable, you should be able to you know hopefully negotiate and come out all, really with good alignment. Um, no more going off and building things and wondering you know, <laughs> right. if, if people will come. Uh, that's just not yeah. a, a good way to do business, and I don't think we can afford to today. Like with competition mm-hmm. in the market and the speed at which decisions are made, we're going to be out, outpaced if we do that. Yeah, that's that, that whole um, consideration of, you know, if you're really going to be prepared to, to make that move uh, is so critical these days. And, and it's not something that's been asked before because it's always been about, oh, well, I'll see something in the data. And then once I see something, then we could figure out whatever right and and that's where you start getting into trouble because you just leave the door wide open with you know there's so many assumptions that sit within that kind of a a a thought process that that's why there's i think you know not as much success as we might have expected these days from doing this kind of work either kind of getting our own way um being set up that way but you actually brought up a, an interesting word, and I, I want to touch on it because you said the word uncomfortable, you know, uncomfortable situations. And that's, that's actually something that I wanted to talk to you about because I know that you do a lot of work uh, and you're, you're maybe not down, and I'm not saying you're not, but um, a lot of people who are down in the trenches of the day-to-day data practitioner kind of things. And I know you're working at more of the strategic level and making some of those kinds of decisions. So uh, I expect that a lot of, you know, some of the things that your teams might be seeing around data and the, and the decisions that come out of that, uh, sometimes it might not always be good news. You know, we like, we're looking for, you know, we're always hoping for the, the best things to come out of what our businesses are doing and our decisions, but sometimes it's not. So can you take us through a time when maybe, the news you had to deliver and talk about um, wasn't so good and you were concerned about how people were going to react. And then I'm curious to juxtapose that with how you thought people were going to react with what actually happened. Yeah, I think um, I personally uh, want my customer, my internal customer, um, that I'm serving to succeed and I like my work. So <laughs> I get excited 
And if you, if you, you know, for folks that know me, they also know I'm um, conceptually oriented, um, which is an interesting line to walk for someone who lives in the data world. And that's their practice. Like the idea is great because mm-hmm. typically you get folks that, you know, it's such a great idea, but then you <laughs> say like, but reality is different. Right. Um, so yeah. part of my personal discipline is balancing that and knowing when to lean in and, and kind of pull back. Um, but I, I think I, I, I went there first because I, I often, you know, get just excited about the idea or the, the concept or you know, the, the theory as, as my customer does. So it, at the same time, I think every day, <laughs> just about, we find out something that wasn't, wasn't true, or we're going to do all this, um, you know, work to build a program to try to, you know, um, reduce the impact of something that happened in the business. Maybe if we, if we think about telecommunications, like maybe there was an outage or you know, mm-hmm. product um, is not satisfying the need or, you know, something simple that we can all relate to. I called and it took me an hour to get through or a half hour, or I got to a rep that couldn't help me. I mean, that, those are universal experiences for all of us. Um, and so people that are concerned about the customer experience and the brand and how they're providing value, try to, you know, they're coming up with all kinds of ideas about how to change things. And sometimes it, it goes the opposite direction. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, there are a couple different ways that can play out. One could be, we tried this and it didn't work. And so when I say it that happens every day, luckily I work for an entrepreneurial, uh, spirited organization, and there's a lot of appetite for trying and seeing. So testing, and then let's learn from that. Makes so, a big difference. I've had whole presentations where, you know, you know, you have four things you're looking at and they're all like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they just, w- what we're talking about here just didn't move the needle and that's okay. Actually, that's, I coach my team that's learning mm-hmm. to find out that we, we couldn't move the needle and this just wasn't the right place to focus. So let's go somewhere else. Um, the other thing that has happened, um, which is also fascinating is I had an analysis where recently my, my team did in, with our business partners where the results were the exact opposite of what we thought. Oh. And so either we were just completely wrong, you know, or what are the other possibilities? We've got a technical issue. Maybe, you know, maybe someone flipped a sign in a model, right? It was right. negative instead of positive. Um, and what we actually found out is that the operationally, they were just going through the steps in the wrong order. The, the team that was executing, oh, you know, instead of like putting the flour and the, you know, water and the eggs first, they, they tried to put the seasoning and the, the fruit to make their, their cake or whatever, you know, <laughs> they did it the wrong way. And so while on its face, you know, it looked like if you just read the data, oh, this thing was completely, you know, not, they went upside down. Once we yep. got into it and started asking the questions, following the natural curiosity um, of what's going on here and wanting to learn, we found out that in fact, in the end the campaign was successful. It's just that there were some operational things that had not been done yeah. correctly. Yeah. And that what you described is actually can be pretty difficult to do um, to break it down and, and go back and, and figure out where something happened uh, it's actually like doing an analysis of your analysis, <laughs> right? Your, right? Your, your, well, and, and having this sophistication, I think, um, to kind of stop and, and I, maybe that's not the right word, but may experience certainly. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to downplay the understanding of what you're doing when you, when you're in an analysis role and you have a responsibility, you, I don't, I don't have to know everything but we have to have a team of people that, that do, mm-hmm. you know, and that they can speak with integrity and with knowledge. And I think there's something to be said for those folks that you go into solving the problem with being able to stop and go, that's not right. You mm-hmm. know, why is it completely backward? Either something is going on here that we just 
didn't expect, which, okay, that's interesting. Um, that would be surprising. There's probably value there in knowing that, or maybe there's something we didn't do right here. And yep. I can just, uh, you sure you've seen, I've seen many of us here, you know, today have, have seen, you know, a report and you put it out in it or someone puts it out and you're like, that's not right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, or right. how is know. that possible? We don't sell in that state. Like how do we have sales there? Mm -hmm. And so it comes back to kind of that data competency theme. And that's the theme now for our conversation, you know, provenance, understanding the quality and, and, and how the underlying systems work. One, one thing I just want to throw out there, um, just to kind of close out this part of the conversation that I think is, is, is really important, but people might not soak it in, at least the way I just soaked it in, is this notion that I think as analysts, because I've, 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 I've done that job before, you feel like you have to know everything, right? When you're trying to solve a problem, right, to, or define a problem, whatever that is. And, and the point you made that I picked up on is, you know, don't necessarily think about it that way. Think about it as the team overall. And I think that's an important, you know, we talked about community and I think this even falls in that idea is that, you know, we're also a community of people and we, we shouldn't necessarily um, think about always working in isolation and, and thinking that we have to be, you know, all of that. I know even like when I teach one of my programs, I tell people, look, don't, don't go off and try to do this on your own. Bring in people, bring in your teammates, even bring in people who aren't your teammates who are because they understand the business and they look at the business from different angles. And that's going to be very helpful to you when you're trying to solve a problem. But there is this tendency, well, especially over the last year, we're so physically isolated too, right? We'll see if we can kind of escape that when we're kind of all back working physically with, with each other at some point. But I think it, it probably made that problem worse because it's just harder to collaborate in the same kinds of, of, of ways. There's new ways to collaborate, but I think some of the things we needed to be better at have probably been you know, pushed back a little bit more uh, than, than being able to make progress on them. I think you make a great point about um, you know, not feeling like you have to carry all the water. <laughs> you, know, you can get other people to help with that. Yeah. Um, and in fact, back to your point about community, and it's why diversity, um, you know, equity and inclusion in organizations mm -hmm. is so important um, to be able to bring all the different diverse points of view. Um, and this goes across a lot of different dimensions, but it might be um, in addition to background, upbringing, education, experience, sure. just someone from the field in or that has experience with the mm -hmm. system to say... Uh, I, I recognize that pattern. Um, I see, I think what's going on here is, is this, and I, um, you, you know, you wouldn't have caught that yourself. So that's also something that, uh, in terms of my teams, I, I coach folks on is go ask someone else to look at it. Um, for someone who's building a community, um, peer review, uh, in terms of analytics is I think an essential part of that. Um, and, and, Getting that done and getting that kind of built into your culture is is difficult, and it goes to the same you know kind of thing I think you were poking at a little bit, which is I feel like I have to do it all myself. I have to know everything. Um, you know, I, I can't. I, I'm afraid to ask a question because I'm going to reveal something. Right. right. Uh, but but honestly, I would much rather um, number one either go in to the meeting or review or meeting with my stakeholder and saying, I'm just putting it on the table. I don't know. <laughs> right. I know what's going on here. Right. There there's competency demonstrated in, in admitting and showing disclosing with transparency. I don't know what's happening here or yeah. my model is veering a little bit off, you know, off the center. I know that I know how to fix it. We will do that. I, I'm just letting you know that 
we see what you see and we're mm -hmm. not trying to hide it. Yeah. Um, just that vulnerability is, it's in the workplace is very hard to come by because yeah. it's always been seen as, you know, not a strength, right? But in reality, you can't know everything. And the world's so much more complex these days, especially when you're working with data, right? It's just, there's so many unknowns and, and gotchas and, you know, the complexity of the software and the connections of the systems. And like you said, where did it go wrong? Who knows? We, you know, it, that's a, a, a huge effort in itself just to isolate uh, those kinds of questions. And, and where it could be happening. So yeah, it's, I think if people could have some more courage around that and it's not, and, and I don't say that meaning to make it sound easy, but I think that that's a, a huge area that uh, everybody has to get good at. You know, the executives have to get good at having the courage to let people do the kinds of things you were talking about. Yeah. You can make mistakes, but we're, we have faith that you're going to fix it. And the people have yeah. the courage to believe them and then to do it. And right. It's that whole kind of cycle that we have to, uh, to, to build up on. And, and there's a difference between like rigor and again, having competency and understanding mm -hmm. what I don't know versus what I do know. And, and, and having conversations with the business or your, your partner, or depending on which side you're on of the table um, about, um, you know, what might be going on here. But I, mm -hmm. I think it, if we can, if you can structure it as we're learning, if you go in as we need to test rather than like, I, I know certainly as a, as a younger analyst, you know, I was again, excited about work and I would want to come in and like, I have the answer, you know, right. this right. is what we should do. <laughs> you know, this one thing, uh, this is the, an yeah, right. Yeah. And I read, uh, so some, some folks that I really respect, uh, that I worked with as, uh, when I was a consultant and they were my client, one of the things that they, they taught me about was the, um, the power of multiplicative, uh, multiplicativity, I guess the, uh, the, the multiplicative nature of incremental benefits, mm -hmm. um, versus trying to get like, you know, a home run just with one time up at bat. Right. What I mean is you know, we can do a lot of smaller things that make us a little bit better. And you just multiply that out that generates the tipping point or the tidal wave or, you know, the, the sea change that, um, you know, may be needed versus trying to do that with one, with one shot. Right. And so if you can wrap into the conversation, let's do a little bit of this at a time. Let's test into it. Let's find out what we don't know. Um, I think it makes, it just sets up a whole different dynamic. It makes everything seem possible. Yeah, I think it's it, actually, this is going to lead in to another topic I wanted to, to hit on, which is, you know, that that's, that's a huge skill, right? Learning how to do, to work that way. Like you said, you, when you were, I have the answer, and, you know, Hey, I've been there, right. We all kind of went through that because we were, we were so sure of ourselves, which that's a, that's a, that's a good skill to have in, in moderation. Uh, but, you know, um, the, you, know, you hear people talk today about, uh, and this is not just today, but it's been going on for the last five, six years about how the skills and analytics and, and, and working with data and all that is uh, an area where there's a huge deficit. Right. Uh, there was going to, and it's still, I, I still think it's way behind probably where they thought it should be uh, uh, today, just to kind of get to where, you know, they, they thought the needs were going to be. So, I'm, I'm, so here, here's the, the thought I, I want to turn by you. So now you've been at Comcast for a little over three years now. And uh, I'm sure that you figured out how to control the whole broadcast system. Uh, just saying that in jest, folks. Uh, no, 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 uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> just no. Save the record. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, have not no. tried. Not, not, <laughs> no, not, go, not doing that. No, no strange theories that I'm introducing no. here. No. Uh, 
uh, and, and uh, just continuing on the on the joke. So the Olympics are coming up. So people all over the world are going to be watching NBC because that's who you got. You know, Comcast owns NBC. So anyway, so now since you you've got control, you've got attention from all the viewers across the world. Uh, what's the one idea you wish you could broadcast to people? to help them, you know, get better at data and analytics? Mm. Um, well, there are no, you know, nanobots involved here or anything, <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, just kind of picking up the idea. Is there one thing I could leave folks with? Um, I think it would be while as data practitioners, analysts, or business leaders that are, um, you know, probably here listening to this um, or watching because we believe in the power of data to explain our world and to teach us things. Um, I think we have to balance that with also perhaps counterintuitively following our, our hunches and going back mm. full circle to where we started the conversation about the way journalists operate. Yeah. I do believe you have to have a point of view about the work that you're doing. And it's not to steer it. It's to provide context for you. Like for, for anyone that has been like through art school or like even an art class, you know, sitting there or design class or, or even a writer, like what's the thing that's the scariest. It's like sitting there with a blank page. Yeah. You know, and, and it is a skill to like put structure to that. Um, but um, w when you are doing that, you know, just think about like, where do you get in inspiration from? And then what do you do? I have a hunch. This is an interesting story to tell. I, I have a, a picture in my mind that I want to share with somebody or I want to realize and, and make material. I think the same idea applies around data and analytics. And that is that, we should not get so, um, you know, caught up with the technology that we just let that drive. And mm -hmm. in fact, I don't even think you should start other than maybe for descriptive purposes, asking, you know, what, what's going on here with the technology. I think that the thing I would ask people to do is to actually stop, think about what it is that we're talking about, asking questions about want to learn and start with what's your what's your hunch or or what's what do you think is actually happening here because in my experience that is the place that um although you may not end up answering that question or you might finding out that I wasn't even you know conceptualizing it in the way we needed to think about mm -hmm. that that's going to that's going to send you on down a path you're going to pull the thread and then things are going to start you know, real, realizing, and you're going to start discovering like what's underneath that. And so I think that that's the thing I would leave with folks is over time, if you're starting out, um, you know, you're going to have to spend more time, you know, um, trusting, you know, is the variance inflation factor within bounds, you know, what's my R squared, like those mm -hmm. like technical measures of whether we're on the right track. But to the extent that you can, um, reach out and talk to other people about what their hunch is. And I guarantee you um, mm -hmm. that there will be mm -hmm. some moment when you the light bulb goes off and you start to engage it. And you go, huh, I have my own theory <laughs> about that. And, and that for me is like the most powerful motivator. You know, it's beyond... Like, what are the the technical stats about you know my regression model or you know these these things that right. I build? It's more I have a hunch and I want to find out the answer. And so trust trust that when you feel a little bit of a nudge, a little bit of a tug, uh, you know, I think there might be something there. That's that's something that is good to follow. And I think that that keeps us. From it brings the human element back into this. Um, it also sometimes results in very simple explanations that when you have 50 possibilities and yeah, you know yeah. you can start taking those off the table and you come back to one, and in retrospect, you might look at it and go, like, 
eh, okay, so it's kind of what we thought. Just being able to like take those other 49 off the table has a huge amount of value and you go, okay, yeah, now yeah. we know. And, I, and the way I talk about that is like knowing with like a capital K, we know mm -hmm. and with a capital K that in fact, based on facts, evidence, knowledge now that, that this is in fact the relationship we see. Um, and so I think that's the thing I, I would impart, um, you know, follow like your, that. follow your, follow your, like, sounds counterintuitive, follow your gut not on the decision, but like, is there something there? Is it worth exploring? Um, because quite often that's where the, where the interesting insight is um, yeah. that you'll just I think that makes, that makes a ton of sense too. I, you know, not just because it, you know, we've lived, lived through those things, but I think, like you said, people get so hung up on the technology. Um, the technology doesn't really understand the nuances of business necessarily. I'm sure you can program rules in and things like that, but you as a person actually understand what's going on and the complexities of you know, all the things that go around it, right? The customer interactions and cultural issues, that, you know, there's the, the business and the way the, the business actually works and the flow of information, right? Whatever that is, uh, but, you know, the, the software that you're running doesn't necessarily understand that or even if it did, can't put all the pieces together the same way we can as, as humans and yeah. uh, to, to kind of abdicate that uh, puts us in a, in a not as good a position maybe, or, you know, you use them together, not, but not in place of, and I, I always, you know, like you were saying, you know, when you talk about a hunch, I always think about it as detective work and being curious and, you know, what do you see on TV shows? And not that I necessarily know what, you know, if that mimics real life, but right. All these, police shows, all they do is ask, they have a hunch and then they ask a lot of questions, right? And they do some research. They, they dig into their computer data, you know, their computer files and try to validate things and put pieces together. And they ask more questions and right. There's it's, it's very iterative and back and forth and in how they do things. And they usually do it as a team, you know, except for some TV shows where it was, you know, the, the lone gun, but nowadays it's more like teams of people who are, who are doing that. So I think it's it's real interesting, and it's a real skill that has to be developed too. I think you can't just throw someone in and say, "Oh, now you're an analyst," and think, "Oh, okay, you know they're going to be able to do that job." It's it's something you have to cultivate over over a long time and teach. So I think teaching people that skill, you know, like you were saying, is you know to to, to have that 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 ability uh, is is critical to to dealing with the kinds of complexities we have today. So uh, I, I, I love that. I think that there's a corollary um, to that, like the human bringing humanity to the work is mm -hmm. don't forget there are humans in many cases that are making the decisions that are, are getting manifested in the data that you're working with. So at the end of the day, whether it's a customer, an employee, um, a, you know, a sales rep or, you know, someone else, even someone provided feedback on their, yeah. you know, on a website about a product or something, uh, there was a human involved. And I think one of the emerging areas that we need to continue to build the capability in is understanding how to represent it and human behavior in yeah. our work. Um, and there's just so many times when we, I think just, you know, when we get into the statistics, we look at, okay, price did that. And, you know, price elasticity of demand is, you know, it's inelastic yeah. or it's elastic and this happened. And therefore, you know, this happened to our customer base or acquisition changed or, you know, whatever. Um, and it's very easy to forget that at the end of the day, there are people with preferences with, with needs that talk to people that experience mm -hmm. products and services. Um, and I feel like that is a, an emerging uh, emerging area with new maturity just in the past few years that I'm actually very interested in. And I think that bringing, just like we say, follow our human hunch, I think we also um, need to follow the same thing. And just remember that on the other side of that, generating the data are people in many right. cases. And to, and to think from their perspective, especially when you're talking about customer experience, brand experience, um, and really, at the end of the day, the, the relationships that we all need 
to be able to stay in business. And hopefully that we're serving along the way, because that's the reason that many of us are in our, in our work and, right. and starting the businesses that we started. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that, and I think that just goes back to the, the, the things we've been saying about people and community and team and teamwork that, you know, as much as there's technology to pull all the data together and do analysis and, and things like that, you can't just say, all right, you know, like forget, okay, that click on the screen still was a human. <laughs> yeah, the machine recorded it and got sent over the internet and compiled by a database, what have you, but there's still a person who did it. And there, there, there may be more to their action than, than, than just the fact that, you know, that they saw an ad, you know, uh, or, or they clicked it for, you know, you don't know what their mood is or you know, any of these things. And it's, it's complex uh situation so uh yeah i I like that idea of bringing in the the human element well this has been great thanks uh for the 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 insight and the kind of the depth of thinking we got we got pretty heavy on on some of these topics but i think we're you know we touched on some things that are real for for all of us these days that we that we have to tackle and it's it gets outside of the 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 down and dirty parts of that we have to do of, you know, getting into the data and doing the technology work that we've got to take time to consider these other things to that, that come in and into our work and can, can actually be uh, the more critical stuff we have to deal with. So thanks so much for your time and, and your, your thoughts. And hopefully, you know, we'll get to see each other outside of a computer screen in the next couple of months and we'll be, Riding side by side somewhere across Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I don't know. That's right. Yeah. Where the road will take us. Yeah, that's right. Well, we'll see. Right. And we'll have to, there'll be a fork in the road. We'll have to follow our, our instincts. Our <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, we can just have Google map make a plan yeah. for us, but yeah. <laughs> like, no, that wouldn't be any fun. Right. Yeah. I like uh, your idea well, better. Yeah. Left or well, right. We can use the, we can use the map to figure out like, you know, where we're headed. Right. Good analogy. So thanks for inviting me on. It's been great to see you again. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again. All right, everybody. See you soon. And next time on Analytics Stories.